Okay, in the last video we started up the Ansel and created a base image for Ubuntu and one for CentOS. I've done a little bit more work since then to create some additional base images and now it's starting to look a little bit more like a real-world developer setup so I thought I would uh, show that to you now. So let me log in to Ant-Man This is the management console for the containers and virtual machines running on your Ansel. And as you can see, I've got the two that I created earlier, base Ubuntu and base CentOS. And then I have a number of additional images that I've created. So you may have done this uh, with um, local containers or virtual machines or on AWS. It's the same kind of concept where you kind of have these images that you start to build on, um, build up over time, just to save you time and uh, work in recreating them. So for an example, I've got a base Alfresco 2017-07 image here, and anytime I want to do some work with that particular release of that particular software, I can just come over here and uh, clone the, the uh, the antlet or the virtual machine. So let's go ahead and do that. I might want to uh, give, or I would want to give this a new name. Let's just call this a demo alf. It's going to give it a new IP. I could create a snapshot based on uh, that machine as it currently sits, or I might just want to use um, a snapshot because maybe I've done some additional work on that image. Uh, that I don't want to include in this new one. And so what I did was when I went and created my base Alfresco uh, install, so like right after getting the software installed, I took a snapshot. And so now when I create my new um, virtual machine, I'll base it off of that snapshot. And you can see it happens very quickly. There's the new image, and now I could configure its networking, start it up, and do whatever I need to do. Something I didn't show in the um, previous video was kind of how these templates work. So if you click Manage Templates, you'll see a list of templates that Ansel has that uh, you can download. So if you wanted to install uh, a Windows 2016 uh, image, you could download that here. Um, I the ones I've downloaded I think I just downloaded um, a new CentOS LXC image and I think this Ubuntu Xenial uh, LXC I think those are the only two I've downloaded but basically you can just download new ones and then they show up over here on the right the other thing you can do is import so if you have um, uh, VirtualBox images on your machine or VMware um, you can just do an import and then drag and drop those uh, like VMDK files, for example, I guess, over here. I haven't tried this yet, so I have a couple that I need to migrate, so I'm definitely looking forward to trying out this feature. Um, so the other, th the other thing that sort of surprised me about this was um, how little um, space was is being used here. Uh, I know that there's some uh, compression that Ansel is doing um, and you can see that these images just the templates are you know a gig or less and then if you go look um, like I guess we could uh, pull up a we could log in to the actual Ansel host when you do a um, ask for the disk space, you can see that each um, antlet virtual machine gets its own volume. And what's kind of interesting is that they all think that they have a gig of space to work with, even though, you know, <laughs> that I only have a, uh, I mean, a gig, a terabyte. Um, they think they have a terabyte of space to work with, but uh, there's just a terabyte of usable total across the whole system. 
Um, but these are not taking up much space at all. And of course, I haven't started to populate them with much data yet. Um, so the other thing I wanted to show was kind of uh, what it looks like as far as CPU utilization when I start to click around on an app um, that is like doing a lot of work. So let me start a new uh, window here. And I don't know if we'll be able to see this whole thing, but we'll try. Um, I'll just use Alfresco as an example because um, it's a fairly intense application. It's a Java application. It uses um, a relational database, in this case, Postgres. Um, it uses Solar, and it does a lot of um, disk I.O. So it's fairly intense. Um, but as you can see, and I'm not, this is not an Alfresco demo, so I really, it doesn't really matter if you can't see the whole thing. Um, but as I click around, maybe this is better. As I click around here, you'll see some spikes um, in the CPU, which is what you would expect. And it never really gets, I haven't seen it get beyond like 40 or 50%. Um, so let's do like an upload of, uh, some files here. This will trigger um, some I.O. This will trigger some um, pretty intense CPU work because it's going to transform these documents um, using LibreOffice. So let's, let's see how that looks. Yeah, there's a 34%. And also that there's full text indexing that's going on. I'm not throwing a lot of text at it uh, with these sample documents, but so you can see, I mean, it went up to 34%, didn't get much beyond that. Um, so, you know, I was sort of, uh, when I ordered my Ansel, I was, uh, you know, my inclination is always to throw as much memory and CPU as I can at uh, hardware because you're kind of stuck with the hardware for a while. So. Um, in this case, this is an ultra, so you can go up to 64 gig of RAM. I stuck with 32. And um, the CPU, they just announced a new uh, line that where you can do um, more cores and threads. So, But at this point, for just a development um, sort of workload, I really think this is going to be adequate for me. Um, I'm getting pretty snappy response as I just uh, click around within Alfresco. And I've also got, uh, simultaneously, I have a, an LDAP server and a mail, uh, a, a container that's running LDAP and a mail server. And right now I have a four node Elastic cluster also running. And, you know, if I were to pound all of those, um, hard with like a performance test, then we could probably spike this CPU. But um, at the minute, uh, for what, what I'm needing to do, this is going to be perfect. So I'm pretty happy with it so far. So that's it. It's pretty, I mean, it's pretty simple. It's a server that allows you to manage and spin up virtual machines. I like it because it makes my Mac uh, I, I don't have to worry about uh, these virtual machines taking up a bunch of space on my Mac or uh, CPU cycles. I can also leave these things running. I don't have to worry about AWS costs. Um, and I don't have to, if I want to disconnect my Mac and uh, go somewhere, my servers will still keep running. And uh, so that's convenient. So been pretty happy. Thanks for uh, the cool product, Ansel and um, see you next time.